Praise the Lord. Everybody, once again, I said, Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you. The Lord enrich your life. The Lord transform you. And the Lord do great, wonderful things in your life. Even in this super Sunday worship in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name. We know you are a mighty God, a never failing God, a loving God, mighty and powerful. And you come to give total freedom, complete freedom, full freedom unto your people. And I pray that here today, none will remain empty handed in Jesus' name. Magnify yourself in every life. Glorify yourself in every family. And I pray you put joy, happiness, and the hope of glory in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know it's done. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. As we come to our worship service today, I want you to understand that the Lord having blessed us, having healed us, having saved us, having delivered us, and still intending to bless us more and more. He wants to reveal to us the fullness of Christ. The fullness of Christ. We receive of the fullness we abide in the fullness we live in the fullness we walk in the fullness and until the end we come face to face with the Lord will pass on to his very presence in his fullness now today we need to understand what we have got already so that we'll be able to make use of the knowledge of what we have received living in the fullness of Christ by faith the life we live from today from now on in the strength of the Lord in the joy of the Lord we want every step every moment to see us walking abiding living in the fullness of christ and all that we do by faith the topic today living in the fullness of christ by faith galatians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 20 galatians chapter 2 verse 20 it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Understand that. After you've given your life to the Lord, Christ in his love, in his strength, in his power, in his unction, in his abiding might and strength enters into you and now you are not empty and your throne the throne of your heart is not vacant anymore you are now living in the faith by the faith through the faith of the son of god it says i live yet not i but christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, not when we get to heaven, here on earth, in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Be conscious of that every time, that you are not living the ordinary life you used to live. You are now living in the faith by the faith and through the faith of the son of god the lord jesus christ 
in Colossians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. For in him dwelleth the fullness of God of the Godhead bodily in Christ dwells all the fullness of God of the Godhead bodily and then in verse 10 it tells us and we ye are complete in him and you are complete in him complete power complete unction complete anointing complete strength that there is nothing lacking anymore if you have been converted to Christ converted by Christ and converted by the sacrifice of Christ on the cross now you are completing him which is the head of all principalities and power it tells us in Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 it says if ye then be risen with Christ Dead, crucified with Christ, dead with Christ, risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Your affection is changed. Your mindset is changed. The direction of your life is changed. You are now living the way Christ would live if Christ were here on earth. And he says, because you are risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And then he says in verse 2 Set your affection, set your love, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. It says in verse 3 It says, For ye are dead. And your life is seen with Christ in God. And now verse 4 says, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. You have started in grace, you will end in glory. You have started with Christ, you will reign with Christ in Jesus' name. Living in the fullness of Christ by faith. There are three things we're going to look at as we talk about living in this fullness of Christ by faith. One, salvation. Two, sanctification. Three, service. Number one, life converting salvation by personal faith when we talk of salvation it's a life-changing experience it's a life converting experience when you say i'm saved that means i am converted when you say i am saved that means I am transformed. When you say I am saved, it say it means the converting, transforming power of Christ from Calvary has effected a change, a mighty change in your life. Life converting salvation by personal faith. Number two, love confirming sanctification sanctification gets us to the point we love god with all our heart all our soul all our mind we love our neighbor as ourselves and we love the believers as christ has loved us sanctification the center of that experience of sanctification is love it's a love confirming experience number two love confirming sanctification by purifying faith number three 
if you are sage, you're sage to serve. If you are sanctified, you are sanctified and absolutely surrendered unto Christ and to the service of the Lord. That brings us to number three. Then, Lord compelling service. The service that is not a man pushing you. It's not a man driving you. It's not circumstance propelling you to serve. You serve because the Lord that lives and abides in you, He compels you. Lord, compelling service with prevailing faith. The faith that prevails. And that's the faith that makes you to get up and to serve. To serve God, serve Christ, serve your neighbor, serve the saints of God, serve the children of God, and serve in a rewardable and profitable way. Lord, compelling service with prevailing faith. Let's come to number one. Number one is the life converting salvation by personal faith. There are many people that talk about salvation. They know about salvation, but they wonder, by the way, what is this salvation? It is good for you to understand what you have. If you don't know what you have, you will not know the expectation of heaven upon your life as you are saved. Look at Acts chapter 16, reading from verse 30, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? There's some preachers that will answer that question by saying, You do nothing, just accept. You do nothing, just hold on to it that you are saved, just confess that you are saved. What must I do? You repent. You turn away from your sin. You look at Christ who died for you on the cross at Calvary. And you believe in your heart. Repent and believe. Then you are saved. Now, that's salvation. What does it translate to? If you write that word salvation is sins blotted out by God. When you are saved, the meaning of being saved is that God takes the blood of Christ and wipes away all the sins you ever committed, blots everything out, cleanses everything completely. Look at the Acts. Chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. That's salvation. That your sins may be blotted out. S, sins blotted out by God. A, abominations burnt off for good, forever. Every abomination in your life All those things that belong to the devil The things that belong to the world The things that will not help you In your race to heaven Salvation means that a Abominations burnt off For good forever Look at this in Acts chapter 19 Reading from verse 18 And men and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds Look at verse 19 It says many of them also which used curious acts Demonic objects, occultic objects, idolatrous objects or materials They brought their books and brought those materials together and burnt them before all men and they counted the price of them and 
found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. And then in verse 20 it says, So my chile grew the word of God and prevailed. That's salvation. When you say, I'm not a child of the devil anymore. I don't need the materials of Satan anymore. And all those regalias and everything of the devil of idolatry. I'm born again now. I hate them. I detest them. And you bring them together. And you bond them. And forget them forever and ever. Never to come back into your life again. That's salvation. L. Life brought out of bondage by grace your life was bound before you were bound to this or this or that and it was a habit that bound you but now you are saying as a result of that salvation l in that salvation translates to life brought out of bondage by grace galatians chapter 5 verse 1 it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, he shall be free indeed. And all the things that tied you, all the chains that tied you, all the habits that tied you down, they are now forever gone. Because salvation means life brought out of bondage by grace be there in salvation virtues burst with goodness the virtue of the lord is burst that is that your life now gives birth to the goodness of the lord the virtue will be there if you are really saved you see if you are saved the works of the flesh are all destroyed and then the virtue and the love of God will not be in your heart in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love and joy and peace long-suffering gentleness goodness and faith salvation will birth will bring forth in your life love hatred is gone joy being gloomy at every little thing all that is gone being sad if the sun rises in the morning some people are sad if it is raining some people are sad if normal things happen people are sad when you are saved your life turns around love comes in joy comes in you have the peace of god with you long suffering you're able to endure gentleness you're not like an high on hand handling other people not caring for their lives anymore and goodness you're good you're good and faith faith in the lord and then in verse 23 we're told meekness and temperance against such there is no law a in that word salvation means affection affection bent towards glory your affection will not be bent towards the night club your affection will not be bent towards corruption your affection will not be bent towards evil things now your affection after you are saved and you are born again your affection is bent towards glory that's what we read in uh, colossians chapter 3 verse 1 if ye there be risen with christ seek those things which are above where christ seated on the right hand of God and then in verse 2 it reminds us set your affections on things above and not things on the earth when we are saved that she there means transformation born out of gratitude transformation born out of gratitude Christ died for me I am grateful Christ gave all on the cross of Calvary. I am grateful. 
Christ surrendered and Christ suffered for me, even me, because of that suffering and because of that surrender, submission of Christ, I am grateful. How do I show my gratitude? By the transformation that takes place. It tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, the mercy that saved you, the mercy that blessed you, and the mercy that took all your guilt away, all your condemnation away, the mercy that has prepared, provided heaven for you, and you are grateful. It says then that you present your bodies now a living sacrifice. Present your body a living sacrifice. What does that mean? You used to present your body to Satan, to the devil. He'll use your tongue to lie. He'll use your hands to fight. He'll use your legs to dance to the tune of the world. He'll use your ears to hear gossip and then use your mouth to spread the gossip. But now, he saved you. You have salvation. There is transformation now that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Look at verse 2. And be not, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. That's salvation. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. I, in that salvation, is innocence. Innocence. Now, if they are causing trouble somewhere, you are innocent of that trouble. If they are dividing, scattering families of their neighbors, and we come to you, you say, I'm saved now. I'm innocent of the action that scattered their family. If they are causing riot in the place of work, and then they say, how about you? How about you? What's your part in this? I am innocent. I'm now a child of God. I don't cause trouble for any manager, any director, any leader any principal i don't cause uh, any trouble anymore for any family there is innocence begotten by the gospel innocence begotten by the gospel it tells us in psalm 19 verse 7 it says the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul and the testimony of the lord is sure making wise the simple and it is that now that sets us totally free and makes us innocent look at verse 13 in verse 13 keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins let them not have dominion over me then shall i be upright and i shall be innocent 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 from the great transgression oh is obedience based on his guidebook the guidebook for the christian is the bible the guidebook that points out to the way of heaven is the bible and now as a child of god you're saying that salvation means you have obedience that is based on the guidebook that leads us to heaven. Romans chapter 6, verse 17. But God be thanked that she were in the past servants of sin, but ye have obeyed, obeyed, obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you the doctrine was from the bible 
a righteous life, a pure life, a practical, obedient life. And now it says you have obeyed that form of doctrine and you obeyed from the heart. Look at verse 18. In verse 18 it says, being then made free from sin. The freedom that he gives us is freedom from sin. You became the servants of righteousness. And then in naughtiness, blocked out with godliness. Naughtiness will try to come in again. Stubbornness will try to come in again. Self-will will try to come in again. But now I am saved. Now I am transformed. Now the sins of the past, they are cancelled. And therefore, there's no naughtiness anymore. If you're a real child of God, the naughtiness is blocked out with godliness. James chapter 1 we're reading from verse 18 in James chapter 1 verse 18 of his own will begat he us that means we are born again with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures and then in verse 19 therefore my beloved brethren saved souls real believers let every man be sweet to hear and slow to speak, slow to roar. Verse 20 For the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. Verse 21 In verse 21, wherefore lay apart, lay aside, abandon. Reject, let there be a shield between you and filthiness and sub superfluity of naughtiness. Get it off your life. If you claim to be saved at home, in church, in the office, on the street, anywhere you are, naughtiness is blocked out with godliness. It says, all the superfluity of naughtiness, get them off and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. That's salvation. That's the meaning of salvation. That's the outcome of salvation. That's the experience of salvation. But you know, we want to live in the fullness of Christ by faith. And if we're going to live in the fullness, we'll move on from salvation to sanctification. Point number two now. In point number two, love confirming sanctification by purifying faith. Love confirming sanctification by purifying faith it tells us in first Thessalonians chapter 5 reading from verse 22 abstain from all appearance of evil and then in verse 23 and a God the very God of peace sanctify you they were saved a new experience was coming the God of peace who gave you peace already at salvation now he will sanctify you holy and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ verse 24 tells us faithfully see that calleth you who also will do it he will do it i said he will do it christians believers children of god should be concerned and passionate about sanctification if you're truly saved and you know christ 
died for you on the cross of Calvary that he might sanctify you and that God, the God of peace desires and he wants to sanctify you soul, spirit and body you'll be passionate about that you will not only say I believe it you will experience it you will not just say I preach it you will possess it and people can tell that the sanctification you preach is reflected in your life private life in your life public life in your life ministerial life now what sanctification look at that again we're using the letters of the word sanctification to give you understanding so that i know when i say i am sanctified this is what it means s surrender all to christ surrender all to christ this grace of god comes to you and you see that christ surrendered everything you say yes lord i too i surrender all unto christ hebrews chapter 11 verse 17 by faith abraham when he was tried offered up isaac and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son you know the story i don't need to repeat all the years that abraham waited and this bundle of joy bundle of laughter became the symbol of all his possession and all the promises and prophecies that god had given him but sanctification makes us surrender all that is precious unto us a abstain from all appearance of corruption there is nothing in your heart anymore that is secretly desiring all the dregs and all the evil in the world we're told in first thessalonians chapter 5 reading from verse 22 abstain from all appearance of evil understand if you are saved you don't need a policeman a police deeper life official following after you and then you are looking back and you are looking here and there the police deeper life policeman is there i must not do this one now the polite pastor is there i must not get involved now and then you are looking back and if the police pastor is no more there now i can you're not a real christian then if you're a real christian whether people know or they don't know whether they see or they don't see sanctification does a work of grace in your heart that anywhere you are you abstain from evil you abstain even from the appearance of evil you abstain from all appearance of evil you're not saying nobody will check my phone the text i send out and the text i receive and then you are carrying on a private love affair with somebody's wife somebody's daughter and because you say my wife will never check this and then you change your pin number to protect everything you have there every time and when you forget your phone somewhere i hope somebody has not picked that i hope they've not seen all those pictures 
I hope they've not seen and they have not read all those things that those uh, women are sending to me. Those men are sending to me. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And then sanctification in uh, nature and affection of Christ likeness. Your nature is changed. Your nature is totally transformed. We're looking at Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4. In verse 4 it says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Sanctification. Partakers of the divine nature. The nature in you is the nature in Christ. And what Christ will not secretly desire you will not secretly desire whatever Christ will not have in his mind in his spirit his soul and cover up you will not cover up like that because everything is transparent you're saved you're sanctified and he has given you the promise of the divine nature and you have that nature in you. C is commitment to his new commandment. Commitment to his new commandment. In John chapter 13, reading from verse 34, it says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that she also love one another. Christ's love is not superficial. Christ's love is not artificial smile. Christ's love is not a pretending nice language. Christ's love is deep is sincere is transparent is helpful christ's love is sacrificial and when we are sanctified then we have a commitment to that new commandment verse 35 by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love not erotic love, not sensual love, not fleshly love, Christ's love, deep love, practical love, sympathetic love. If he have love one to another, when we're sanctified, we're fully committed unto that. T is truthfulness in all communication. T, truthfulness in all communication. Have you known so-called believers? I'm sanctified, sanctified, sanctified threefold. And when they tell their wife something, the wife without going out to check up anything, that's what my husband said. And then she happens to be discussing with another person who knows the family. And that person mentions something that the wife had told or the husband had told the wife at home. And it's a different story. It's a different side. And it is colored. It is doctored. It is tailored. It is not the real truth. But you know, if we're truly sanctified, the kind of sanctification that will take us to heaven 
there is truthfulness in all communication and then the wife comes home my dear honey my husband yesterday you told me this and that and so and so was talking to me just just accidentally mentioned that and it is uh, what did he say he said this this and this you didn't hear me well you didn't hear that's the trouble you're not listening to me what what, what did it i tell you that and then you just say bold face and shouting shout sat down my friend you know sanctification is not make believe sanctification is something real is something definite if we don't have it let's go back to calvary let's go back to the lord and live in the fullness of christ so that we know here is sanctification and you are sanctified through and through you have uh, the truthfulness in all your communication we come to ephesians chapter 4 verse 24 and that she put on the new man which is after god and is created in righteousness and true holiness not fake holiness not just word of mouth holiness and then he tells us in verse 25 in verse 25 wherefore putting away lying speak every man the truth with his neighbor for ye are for we are members one of another look at verse 29 in verse 29 let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace to the hearers now when a sanctified man a sanctified woman talks to another person that person will feel the comfort of the spirit the joy of the lord the upliftment in his spirit he will minister grace to those who are hearing him i is integrity 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 in an afflicting crisis when a sanctified man a sanctified woman goes through a time of crisis came suddenly unexpectedly you know what will happen the integrity he had at the point of salvation sanctification that integrity will go through with him uh, through the period of crisis we're told in job chapter 2 reading from verse 3 job chapter 2 verse 3 and the lord said unto satan as thou considered my servant job that there is none like him in the earth a perfect and an upright man one that feareth god and is choice evil and still holdeth fast his integrity sanctification holding fast is integrity complaint will not steal my integrity anger will not steal my in integrity misbehavior will not steal my integrity the accusation of people whatever they think about me will not make me okay you say i'm bad you have not seen what it means to be bad you say i'm not worthy you have not seen unworthiness yet you say i'm not trustable you have not you have not seen anything yet god it's not my fault my husband said i'm not trustworthy my wife said i'm not dependable and because they said that 
I'm going to prove to them, my friend, you did not have integrity. And what happened only brought it out that you didn't have integrity. When that I, letter I, is missing in the spelling of sanctification, sanctification is no more there. You have to understand that all these attributes spell out sanctification in your experience. And God said, he still holds on to his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. F is freedom from uh, the ancient carnality. F in the sanctification is the freedom from ancient carnality. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, reading from verse 1, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto the spiritual. I know you speak in tongues. I know you try to manifest some baby childish gifts of the spirit. I know you try to copy this person and that person. There's somebody there who is having headache. There's somebody there who says something, his ear is itching him. There's somebody there who says skin on the right leg is itching him. Uh-huh. But you are carnal. Carnal. And they have not been made free from the carnality the ancient carnality i brethren will not speak unto you as unto spiritual but as unto carnal even as unto babes in christ look at verse 2 i have fed you with milk and not with meat for he that too you are not able to bear it. Canal Christians, anything, whatever they want to hear, it's always about water, water of life. Always about milk, the milk of the word. But the meat of the word, why is the pastor preaching like this today? What we came for, we came for water, we came for milk. We don't want the meat of the world. If you only take milk every day, milk morning, afternoon, and evening, milk Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, milk every time, you'll be anemic. You'll not have all the nutrients you ought to have. And these people were carnal. And in their carnality, they rejected the meat of the world. They were not able to bear it. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, it says, For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife, they were not sanctified. Envy and strife. And then it says, And divisions. Divisions. Are ye not carnal and walk as men? I pray that real sanctification that we have been singing about for years, Jesus only and Jesus ever, Savior, Sanctifier, Healer, Coming King. I pray that sanctification will be real in every life in Jesus name and then as we talk about this sanctification and we know we have to have integrity and freedom I imprint the imprint of the image of Christ that the image of Christ is imprinted in our spirit and it tells us in romans chapter 8 reading from verse 29 romans chapter 8 
reading from verse 29 it says for whom he did for no he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son sanctification to be conformed to the image of his son that the life we live the thoughts we see the plans we make the decisions we carry out it will be like christ himself thinking and planning and deciding and carrying out everything because the image of christ is imprinted in us see confirmation of the new covenant the confirmation of the new covenant hebrews chapter 8 verse 6 but now as he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says i'm finding fault with them he says behold the days come says the lord that i will make a new covenant for the house of israel and for the house of judah and when that new covenant takes place look at verse 10 in verse 10 it says this is the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days says the lord i will put my laws into their mind that's sanctification i will put my laws he will do it it's not like you know uh, you know the pastor telling his members how many times am i going to emphasize this how many times am i going to say this we said this last year we said this last month didn't you hear and uh, i forgot when it is written on your heart you'll not forget the law of god the word of god transferred from the brain to the heart it says i will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts and i will be to them a god and they shall be to me a people and then if there is attitude of acceptance of acceptable contentment contentment when we're sanctified he gives us the attitude of contentment but godliness with contentment is great gain first timothy chapter 6 verse 6 and t there is transparency with an and attested attesting conscience we have transparency your life is transparent and the conscience bears you witness in acts chapter 24 reading from verse 16 and herein do i exercise myself that's paul the apostle paul did not say i'm a preacher i'm an apostle and a man of authority no man can challenge me i'm first class first rich number one apostle i'm a law to myself others cannot touch that pastor do you others cannot go there pastor do you others cannot drink that whether private or public leader you do that i am number one and there is no law that controls me you know the lawless people you will not get to heaven if you are so high woman leader 
if you are so high pastor brother that you are not under the control of the word of god and your conscience is dead and your conscience is completely sealed follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord once the conscience is gone you'll be acting anyhow talking anyhow doing whatever you want to do your office your position takes the better part of you that's all you ever think about you're not thinking about transparency with your conscience attesting to it and paul the apostle said and hearing do i exercise myself to have always sometimes others are there sometimes others are not around always sometimes you are by yourself sometimes there are people who are with you always in the private and in the public always having a conscience void of offense toward god and toward man the transparency of conscience will be their eye is identification with the actions of christ whatever christ will not do i cannot do wherever christ will not go i cannot go there whatever christ cannot say to a woman i as a man cannot say to her whatever christ will not discuss with a man if you're a woman whatever christ will not discuss with them you will not discuss with them eh, she's my mommy uh-huh i hear you she's my beloved sister i hear you but you know what's in your heart when we're saved when we're sanctified we have identification with the actions of christ all that kind of sentiment you're hiding under mommy mommy uh, daddy daddy under a uh, beloved sister beloved brother the lord knows your heart sanctification will take away all those private things we are sharing together it says in hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 but we see jesus who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crouch with glory and honor that he by the grace of god should taste death for every man and then in verse 10 it says for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory and to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings then in verse 11 look at the identification here for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one christ and the sanctified one the sanctifier and the sanctified they are all of one for which cause he is not ashamed to be called or to call them brethren who oh, is one accord in conformity to christ oh one accord in conformity to christ there are people that you know go around and are blowing the trumpet i'm sanctified i'm sanctified they have a disagreeable spirit 
They have the disagreeable attitude. They are always looking for something to criticize, something to oppose, and they are always looking at somebody who is standing to make him trip and to make him fall. But you know, when we are sanctified, in line with the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is one accord in conformity with Christ. Look at John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. They were already saved. He said, rejoice because your names are reaching in heaven above the salvation, beyond the salvation, apart from the salvation. He prayed for them now and he said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And then in verse 18, he says, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Verse 19 tells us, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Verse 20 says, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. Look at verse 21. It said that they all may be one. One accord in conformity to Christ. That they all may be one. As thou father art in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me in newness with affirmed crucifixion. Newness, newness of life, newness of thought, newness of behavior, newness of lifestyle, newness within and without with affirmed crucifixion. Galatians chapter 2 reading from verse 20 Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 I am crucified with Christ I Paul said I am crucified with Christ you don't understand crucifixion there you are with your hands stretched on the cross there you are with your feet nailed to the cross and people passing by, uh-huh, it says it's Christ. If you are Christ, come down and we'll believe you. He didn't reply. When you are crucified, you'll not be, you know, replying this and replying that. When you are crucified, you'll not be fighting back. When you are crucified, you'll not be reacting. When you are crucified, you are there. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. And all this self-defense and all this infighting and all this uh, psychological warfare and all the things methodical battle that Christians have. That's not sanctification. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. The old me is not alive anymore. The old me that will get angry at, you know, the snap, uh, snapping of the finger. The old me that is covetous. The old me that is traditional. The old me that's, you know, everywhere watching over people, not watching over myself. The old me going in, arresting them and committing them into prison. Not I anymore. Neither, neither do I live anymore, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me, the sanctification. And I pray that the Lord himself will do this deep work of sanctification in every life in Jesus' name. The Son has taken away your voice over there. Yeah. Amen. He will do it. We'll come to point number three now. Point number three is our service, Lord, 
compelling service with prevailing faith. The kind of service that is compelled by love. I didn't want to be a worker. You know, but they keep on making announcements. You've been two years, three years in the church. You're sitting down there. What are you doing? I don't want to be a worker, but they have been saying uh, if you are there and you are not grateful, we're feeding you. You are not, you know, responding. You are not reciprocating. Okay, okay, I'll be a worker. That's not that. You are not compelled by love. You see sinners perishing. And you see the people that have needs And you ought to serve the Lord With all your heart, all your soul And all your mind And you are not compelled by love The service that God accepts The service that God will reward Is the service that is propelled And compelled by love Did you see after we finished rendering our service to the church. We made our contribution to the crusade. And we practiced, we prepared, and see everything we have done. And see that, you know, when the preacher even came, he did not even refer to us as the good singer, appreciating us and lifting us up and making the congregation to clap for us. Okay, if it is like that, then uh, when we come the next time, we'll sing like this and sing like that. Come on, come and sing like that. You are not serving the Lord. You are serving your own pride. And you are serving your own ego. But when you are compelled by the love of God. And you say, Lord, here am I. For what you've done for me. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. All I can do is to respond and pay in a little way. Because your love compels me. That is service. As we talk about service, what service is seeking the lost for Christ. Seeking the lost for Christ. If you are not seeking the lost, if you are just in one place there and you think you are serving God, you are not even interested in what people who are getting saved. You're not interested in counseling those who are getting saved. You're not, you not interested in seeking out and going out to the people who are not saved to be saved. Jesus said in Luke chapter 19 verse 10, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's the service. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. If I were here every day, every moment, every time, at every opportunity, I'd be seeking to save that which was lost and you are there standing in for me representing me occupy until i come when we say there is service it means we exalt loyalty above convenience there are times the service will not be convenient but there is one word in us it is the word loyalty and we exalt that loyalty he called me and he expects me to be faithful he called me he expects me to be loyal and we exalt loyalty above our convenience in acts chapter 20 verse 24 it says but none of these things move me none of these things move me persecution pain problem whatever and wherever it's coming from none of these things move me neither count i my life dear unto myself so that i might finish my cause with joy and the ministry which i have received of the lord jesus to testify 
to preach, to proclaim the good news, the gospel of the grace of God. And we push all your discomfort behind, seeking for convenience, push all that behind. You exalt loyalty above convenience. And then are retaining, retaining the landmarks without compromise. You're not saying, well, salvation, salvation. We're not talking about repentance. I want the people to be saved. We're not talking about repentance. How will they be saved without repentance? We look for healing, explosive miracle, and people blind eyes opening, the deaf hearing, and the lame rising up and walking. We're not going to talk about sin. We're not going to talk about new life in Christ. We cannot talk about righteousness now. This is the moment and this is the day of miracle. You remove the ancient landmarks because you are in pursuit of miracle. Talk about everything. The world, the whole world. For the whole world from the Christ who has sent us in Proverbs chapter 22 verse 28. Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. Martin Luther evangelized. But still emphasized repentance, faith in Christ. John Wesley evangelized. And John Wesley saw great, great miracles. He still emphasized holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. Charles, Charles Finney evangelized and still emphasized the life a born again believer ought to live. That's what we do. We don't say this is a miracle time and this is a, you know explosive time and therefore forget the old ancient landmarks in serving the lord we retain the landmarks without compromise it tells us in first timothy chapter 4 verse 15 first timothy chapter 4 verse 15 meditate upon these things and give thyself holy to them that thy profiting may appear to all and then in verse 16 verse 16 says take it unto thyself and unto the doctrine continue in them you are evangelizing continue in them and you are praying for people to have explosion of miracles continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee v is visualizing the lord at his coming what will he find in your hand how will he meet you when he comes as for serving the lord you are asking, will this be acceptable to him at his coming? Visualizing your, the labor, visualizing the Lord at his coming. In Luke chapter 12 verse 40. Be therefore ready also for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. In verse 41. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all? Verse 42. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them? their portion of meat in due season i increasing our labors through cooperation increasing our labors 
through cooperation. They are evangelists, they are counselors, they are singers, they are technical people, they are ushers. You all cooperate together, work together in one accord so that your labor and the fruit of your labor will increase. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, I have planted Apollo's watered cooperation, but God gave the increase. See, calling the lawless out of eternal condemnation, calling the lawless, those who act as if there were no law, no principle, no commandment from the Lord. There are men who act like that. I mean, the church. I just choose this as my church. As for all you're expecting to conform to the word of God, to live by the word of God. Uh -uh, I didn't come here for that. They're lawless. Women who say they are part of the church. I hear that. I hear the emphasis on holiness. But I'm not here for that. I came just because, you know, my friend is here and I like to be here. You are not here. Your heart, your mind, your personality is not here. You're like, is that Jacob? I hear the voice of Jacob, but I feel the skin of Esau. Be a person that if you are there, you are there. You accept the word of God to be in deeper life Bible church you have to accept the Bible believe the Bible embrace the Bible we're not looking for numbers of a mixed multitude the people you say I'm there aren't you happy pastor I'm a member of your church now I said I'm not happy yet until I see that evidence of salvation that you are born again that the power of the cross has effect upon your life that is what the Lord expects and I pray you'll be a real member of the church of the living God in Jesus name Praise the Lord. And so the Lord wants us to get all those lawless people out of condemnation and bring them into the Lord. He is engaging in limitless liaisons for the great commission. I see brother dear is really born again. I didn't know him before. I said, come on, take my hand. We have a lot to do together. I see another person there, his sister there. And then I say, you are born again. What are you doing? There's a lot of work to do. Let there be limitless liaisons, joining hands together. And joining hands together, people of the same mind and people of the same concept. And they say, we're going to win our world for Christ. As you do that, all the grace, all the power, all the strength, all the might, all the anointing, all the unction, all the energy, divine energy you need, the Lord will grant unto you in Jesus' name. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19, But do I be free from all men, yet I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. I bend low, I humble myself, I make myself a servant unto all that you and I, that we and them, that all of us may bring more souls into the kingdom. And then in verse 22, it tells us in verse 22, it says, To the weak became I as weak, and I don't push them away. I don't say, No, we don't need you. We all come that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might 
by all means, by all methods, by all strategies, in all ways, by all means, save some. In verse 23, it tells us, and this I do. Not only that I did it in the past today, this I do. Joining hands with them for me limitless liaisons because of the great commission, inviting them to come, accepting them to come. If they are children of God and they are born again because sinners cannot win sinners to the Lord. If they are children of God, this I do. For the gospel said that I might be a partaker thereof with you. That you might be partaker thereof with me. We'll do it together. I said we'll do it together. Number one is the life converting salvation that we have by personal faith. Number two is the love confirming sanctification by purifying faith. And number three is the Lord compelling service we're prevailing faith and I pray this kind of faith that works in us, works on us and works through us and touches other lives, personal faith, purifying faith, prevailing faith will be in every one of our lives in Jesus name. God bless you. God lift you up. God put all his great, all his might into you. And God transfer the zeal he has given me. The love he has given me. The passion he has given me. That all these many years has not died down. He will give you that kind of love. That kind of passion. That kind of unction. That in this your life. You will demonstrate sanctification, salvation, sanctification, and service unto the Lord. I invite you, don't be different. Be like me as I am in Christ. And the grace of God will keep on multiplying in every one of your lives. Where are you? Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, here am I. I'm ready. I've heard. I accept. I believe. I will live like that. Open your mouth and pray.